Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow True Heel Nation members. This is your good brother, J News, with another edition of J News Japan coming back at you for the weekend. We've got stuff going on from Friday, November thirteenth, the New Japan Showdown Tour for the New J for the New Japan in the USA uh, field of roster guys here in the U.S. And then also the uh, the first show for the Best of Super Juniors and World Tag League that happened earlier today on November 15th. We'll start with the New Japan Strong, New Japan Showdown show that aired on Friday, November 13th, 2020 at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NewJapanWorld.com and Fight TV. First match of the night was a tag match between All Heart, Blake Christian, and ACH versus Adrian Quest and Alex Zane. Bit of bit of news on Alex Zane, if it hasn't been reported already uh, via the other uh, via the other shows. Uh, it seems that, that Alex Zane is wrapping up his independent dates. Uh, rumor has it that Alex Zane has signed with the WWE. Uh, not necessarily sure um, if he's just going to be 205 Live or NXT bound, but we will see. Hopefully, good things, bright future for Alex Zane. On to this match, 7 minutes and 12 seconds. Um, the I would want to see... They, they, uh, Kevin Kelly talked it up during the match. Uh, I want to see Alex Zane and Blake Christian go one-on-one before they stop airing any of Alex Zane's matches on New Japan. Uh, on New Japan World. Um, it seems like those guys can get really, really crazy and really, really nuts one-on-one. Uh, so I would just like to see a spot fest between the two of them. <laughs> Uh, to be quite honest, uh, solid match between all four all four competitors. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen Adrian Quest ever since uh, I believe it was um, Lions Break Crown because he wasn't a part of Road to Road to Showdown um, or anything of that nature for the last couple of weeks. So good to see him. Uh, he dyed his hair now he's blonde. Uh, Play Christian, all the heart in the world. ACH looking a little beefier, uh, looking a little older with a, a, a now a beard. That he's sporting. Uh, the reason as to why I'm even describing this is that is so that people get people don't get too surprised when when they see them in the Super J Cup in the next coming weeks uh, on December 12th. The, that show will air on Fight TV in New Japan World. Um, quick quick tag match. Uh, the victors were Alex Zane and Adrian Quest. Alex Zane did the victory roll on Blake Christian. A real surprise there to to Blake Christian as he had the the shock face uh, at the end. Of the match. Second match of the night, we had Fred Rosser versus Filthy Tom Lawler. 11 minutes and 13 seconds of pure, raw, unadulterated, beat down wrestling. This is what I, I expected out of this match. This is what I've been wanting to see from Tom Lawler. Uh, this was a little bit of a, a, for me, from my experience of watching Fred Rosser over the years, aka Darren Young, um, this was new for me to see him have this more of a more physical, uh, more physical, hard hitting, brawling kind of a style, um, to the extent of physical violence that I saw him uh, saw him here in this match. Um, it does seem that Tom Lawler has his uh, his team filthy members, J.R. Kratos, and um, wow, why am I forgetting his name? Rusty Taylor <laughs> are part of his uh, team filthy. Uh, he was uh, mentioned during last week's airing of New Japan Strong that he was in the crowd watching their tag match. Uh, so, it so it seems that Team Filthy, Tom Lawler, Rusty Taylor, and J.R. Kratos are going to be making their presence felt on New Japan Strong. Uh, solid slobber knocker fest match here. Uh, Tom Lawler hasn't been back since his first appearance on New Japan Strong. Uh, so I kind of predicted... That he was going to win this match over Fred Rosser, being that Fred Rosser's already had a lot of TV time um, on New Japan Strong in the last coming in the last month and a half. Um, so Tom Lawler did win this match due to referee stoppage on a submission, uh, which Fred Rosser could not uh, get out of. Fred Rosser got his ha his ass handed to him, but so did Tom Lawler. But for, uh, but Tom Lawler did do more damage to Fred Rosser and his left arm uh, throughout the match than anything else. Third match of the night, another uh, another tag match. It was a six-man tag match. We had Carl Fredericks, Brody King, and the uh, entering Juice Robinson uh, on New Japan Strong. 
versus members of the Bullet Club, Chase Owens, Tonga Loa, and Jay White. Nine minutes, 51 seconds of, I don't necessarily even know what to call this. It was just your your standard New Japan six-man. There wasn't anything that blew me out of the water here. Um, everybody looked decent. Nobody looked nobody looked bad. Um, Juice Robinson hit Pulp Friction on Chase Owens because we all know when there's a tag match, Chase Owens needs to pin. Um, uh, so that's the way that that match went. Uh, the only thing I do have to mention here, Juice Robinson and Carl Fredericks look good together. Brody King looked like the odd man out in their, in their particular pairing. Um, and Brody didn't really do much until the spot where him and Tangaloa got in there. And that was brief, to be quite honest. Um, Tangaloa was, uh, I think, a little bit more more enthused, more energetic in this match. Because it seemed like he was more into it. And you can tell by his body language and the way he was moving in the ring. So that was a plus in, in, in difference to what's been going on. The last couple of times he's been on New Japan Strong. So that's a plus. Jay White's Jay White. He's always um, on game. And Chase Owens is, is Chase Owens. He's always on game too. Depending if he gets the win or if it's eating the pin. They're in tight match. Uh, fourth match of the night. It was PJ Black versus Tama Tonga. Uh, something happened during this match. Either it was an accident or it wasn't. Um, I think PJ Black accidentally cut Tama Tonga on his right shoulder. Uh, it was it was an abrasion, uh, to say the least. It wasn't anything that I thought that that um that happened on purpose, but I think Tama Tonga called up and hit PJ Black with the receipt, and he busted his nose <laughs> for 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 that I guess because man PJ Black looked ugly, and the majority of the rest of the match after that happened, after Tama Tonga um either cut PJ Black on the nose or he busted his nose with with whatever the maneuver was. Uh, PJ Black was bloody all across his face. The camera angle was so was so far out and not and not in his usual placing um, as it is in, in New Japan Pro or New Japan Strong. Should I say? I'm sorry um, that they did not want to um, focus on PJ Black's face and the blood that was pouring onto its face. Um, Ten minutes, thirty eight seconds. This is probably the most solid one on one match PJ Black has had on New Japan Strong. Uh, regardless of the injury or not. Um, but by the end of the match, it seemed like they, the both of them were square. Uh, no no real heat, no real tension from the from the looks of it. Uh, Tama Tonga uh, won the match with a gun stun um, to better cement his singles run on New Japan Strong. Uh, so that was the end of New Japan Strong. Next week, uh, we will be having a the main event match for New Japan Strong. is going to be uh, David Finley versus Kenta for the right certificate of the US the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship belt. So they're going to be fighting over that over that briefcase uh, in next week's main event, and then probably some more tag matches, uh, some more random thrown together tag matches. On to the main show, we have the Best of Super Juniors 27 tournament and the World Tag League. Brief bit of news before we enter into the best of Super Junior side of things. Yuya, Yuimura, the young lion, uh, is going to be a part of the best of Super Junior's 27 tournament. He will be taking the place of Yoshinobu Kanaru, uh, who is currently out with a knee injury. So, uh, he gets the chance here to show out, prove himself, and he's no longer going to have uh, young lion matches. These are matches with guys who are no longer in the black in the black tights and the black boots. Uh, so we'll see what uh, what Yurimura has got for us to see. Here we go. Match number one. World Tag League 2020 Best of the Super Junior 27 Tournament Live today. Sunday, November 15th, 2020. Live from the Aichi Professional Gymnasium. 2,558 in attendance. That place looked packed, by the way, guys. I can't tell you offhand what the percentage of um, of folks uh, or or percentage of, of fans that were in in the uh, in the arena, but it did look like a packed show. Um, so that was it was cool to see. Obviously, they're still not allowed to uh, vociferate or, or yell and stuff like that in other cases, but lots of clapping and lots of stomping going on. First match of the night was a World Tag League match. First match. Toriano, Tomohiro Ishii of the Chaos Faction, 
one-on-one -on -one versus Bullet Club members. Chase Owens and the returning. Bad Luck Fale. Bad Luck Fale hasn't been on TV since before the pandemic. Uh, this match was very, very short. Five minutes, 35 seconds. Um, Toru Yano got the pinfall on Bad Luck Fale. Uh, I cannot tell you that this match was great, that everybody got their shit in or anything of that sort. It was too fast to uh, to even tabulate. Um, it's the same scoring system as the G1, both for World Tag League and the Best of Super Juniors Tournament. So wins get two points, losses get no points, draws get one point. So in this case, Toru Yano and Tomohiro Ishii, who got the win here, uh, got two points, one win, two points. And the Bullet Club team of Chase Owens and Battle Fale, no wins, one loss, zero points. Second match of the night, Best of Super Junior match, the first one versus Master Wato and the Young Lion. Yuya Uemura in this one. Yuya Uemura came out with a with with what I like to say. He came out with his hair on fire. The main man entered the ring, ran into the ring. Master Wato had his entrance, dropped the ring jacket, bell rung. Uemura was all over Master Wato. As a matter of fact, Yuya Uemura dominated this match. Yuya Uemura should have won this match from bell to bell. But at the end of it all, because Master Watto is the more veteran wrestler. Uh, he hit the TTD at the end of the match to escape with a win. So Master Watto, one win, no losses, two points. Yui Uemura, zero wins, one loss, zero points. Now, I'm going to say this and not go off onto a very long tangent. I understand the position of Yui Uemura in this tournament for the best of Super Juniors at this very point in time. Um... I figure that he is probably going to take the majority of the losses being that he's a young lion. Um, I feel as a uh, rite of passage or uh, good booking for this young man, this young wrestler, um, he's got nowhere to go. Uh, he can't go to another country to excursion. He's been more, in, in my eyes, as a, as a fan, right? Because I'm not backstage, I'm not one of management. But in my eyes, he's more than proven himself in the ring. He's more than ready to be out of the black trunks and the black boots. I hope that regardless of the fact, if he does lose the majority of his matches in the Best of Super Juniors tournament, that this does become into a story where he becomes his own, where, where eventually he becomes his own man and gets out of the Young Lion system without having to compete in a Young Lion Cup, um, and just become a uh, just become a character um, on the main New Japan proper roster. Uh, that is my hope from this tournament for Yu Yurimura, being that he was the one that was entered into the tournament and it wasn't Gabriel Kidd in this sense. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping for the best for Yu Yurimura here, even though I know he's probably going to lose the majority of his matches. Match number three, back to the World Tag League. We had the returning Toa Hanare teaming with the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi against the great Okan and his mystery partner. The mystery partner was revealed probably sometime last week. Uh, I think it was either Uncle Dave or, or guys on, on, P, on uh, PW Insider who revealed that Jeff Cobb was going to be the great Okan's tag team partner and yet... Uh, to 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 the uh, to the realization, Jeff Cobb came out as the now third or no fourth member of the Empire faction. Uh, so it's Jeff Cobb and Great Okan uh, versus Toru Hanari and Hiroshi Tanahashi here. This match lasted two minutes twenty eight seconds. Um, Hiroshi Tanahashi was taken out of the match early uh, and quickly. Uh, Jeff Cobb hit Toru Hanare. Uh, with a tour of the islands and he got the pin after the bell rung uh, I want to say I want to say this uh, they are going to be playing up another Hiroshi Tanahashi knee injury because the great Okan decided to put on some sort of a knee bar submission after the after the match was over and after the bell rung to go back to the first match as well um, no not the first match I think it was the next match if I'm not mistaken. No, nope, no, nope, it was the first match. Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens beat the crap out of Toru Yano after the match was over as well. Um, so I'm not too sure 
I'm, I'm not, not, that, not that I'm not too sure. Toru Yano seems to be going into the rest of the tournament, the World Tag League tournament, with an, with an injury storyline, and as well is Hiroshi Tanahashi. A fourth match of the night, another best of Super Junior match. The returning Robbie Eagles went one on one with Deuki of Suzuki Goon, and Robbie Eagles does side with the Chaos faction. Uh, decent match, 10 minutes, 35 seconds. Robbie Eagles won with the Ron Miller special submission maneuver at the end of it all. Um, and it was a good back and forth between Robbie Eagles and Duki. There was no, um, I, will, I, I want to say there was no real dominance between either wrestler. Um, even though I feel like Robbie Eagles had the upper hand during the majority of the match. But it wasn't anything that was super dominant or, or, or overbearing in any sense. So, I wanted to lay that there. Uh, so, we have one win, zero losses, two points for Robbie Eagles here. Zero wins, one loss, zero points for Duki in that in that realm. And also, with the World Tag League match, we have zero wins, one loss for the team of Hanari and Tanahashi. And, Tanahashi, and one win, zero losses for the Empire team of Jeff Cobb and Great Khan. So, fifth match of the night. Back to World Tag League action. We had Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto of Chaos. That tag team versus the actual IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, the Dangerous Techers, Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi. 10 minutes, 29 seconds. Uh, what can I say about this match? It was your typical uh, match between these uh, these four. Uh, they've been going at it for the last two and a half months. Um, and any sort of a variation, if it's just four of them or if it's six of them or whatever have you, but, you know... Yoshihashi wanted more gold. Um, he wants a sh he will ultimately wants a shot at those tag team straps uh, to get more gold on him. Uh, unfortunately, this match did not do them any favors. Uh, the Chaos Fashion won uh, lost here. The Chaos Fashion lost uh, Sunset Flip by Zack Sabre Jr. onto Yoshihashi to get the pin by surprise. Uh, they got out of that match uh, by the skin of their teeth, and it showed because they ran out of the ring, got their belts. They did not stick around like they usually do post match. They got their belts from ringside from the ringside area and ran out of that arena as quickly as they could because they knew they got out of that match with a fluke win because they should have lost that match against Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto. Uh, sixth match of the night, best of Super Junior match. Um, that that's coming up. Uh, zero points for the losing team, Yoshihashi and Goto. One win, two points for Zack Sabre Junior and Tai Chi. Uh, show versus Bushi. So we had Chaos versus Los Ingobernables de Japón. Uh, 10 minutes, 20 seconds. Um, show's always doing his thing, man. But, you know, first match back in, I want to say, one-on-one -on -one competition in, in, in a while. Um, and Bushi, I've said this before, and I will continue to say this, Anytime Bushi wears a, a, his full-on suit gear to the ring, he is bound to lose a match. And that is what happened. After 10 minutes and 20 seconds, Sho hit the shock arrow. Finisher, one win, two points for Sho. Zero wins, one loss, zero points for Bushi. Uh, as that was the culmination of that match. Solid match between the two. Good back and forth. Um, but, you know, I didn't have any predictions on this one, so I don't necessarily know where it's going to go. Um, I don't have a favorite, just to say that out, uh, just to put that out there, for the best of Super Juniors match. I do not have a favorite. I don't necessarily know how this is gonna go, um, just based off of the the way that everything's been presented as of late. So you know, we'll watch show to show and see what happens. Seven match of the night, another World Tag League match. We had the pairing of Sanada and Shingo Takagi of Los Ingo Bernardos de Japón versus Yujiro Takahashi. And evil of the Bullet Club. Twelve minutes, twenty seconds. <sighs> this is when booking doesn't make sense, right? Um, you just had Sonata be evil in the G One tournament, one on one, and due to the fact that this is a multi man match, it's a tag team match. Uh, Yujiro Takahashi was able to get the attention of the referee or pulled the referee by his shirt. Evil gets the low blow on Sonata. Uh, was able to spin Sonata around and hit him with everything is evil, the STO, uh, to get the pin. Uh, dirty finish here. 
uh, because of the low blow, obviously. Uh, Sonata and Shingo Takagi uh, lose this match. Zero wins, one loss, zero points for Los Cinco de Navas de Japón. Uh, one win, zero losses, two points for the members of the Bullet Club. I, I'm throwing my hands up at this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, solid match here. Best of Super Juniors match we had. Uh, Taguchi uh, versus El Desperado of Suzuki Goon. 12 minutes, 35 seconds. The veteran, Taguchi. Uh, and El Desperado went back and forth for the majority of this match. Usual Taguchi tactics with his comedy, his brand of, his brand of comedy, using the funky weapon uh, at all costs, but showing the arsenal of offense that he also has. Uh, El, El Desperado doing his usual heel shit uh, to, to try to get across and um, and win his matches. But at the end of it all, the 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 the, the tenured veteran uh, Ryusuke Taguchi got the win. Two points for Taguchi, zero points, one loss for El Desperado. In the best of Super Juniors match, uh, the World Tag League match was next. We had the returning World Tag League champs, David Finley, Juice Robinson, Finn Juice versus the G.O.D. The 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 what can I say? The O.G.s of the Bullet Club, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga. Um, sixteen minutes forty two seconds. Probably the best tag match of the night, to, to, to be quite honest, even though I was very in and out on it. Um, but just from a work rate perspective, it was the best tag match of the night. Um, Juice looked good. David Finley looked good. G.O.D. looked looked like a well-oiled machine. Um, and they haven't really looked like that in New Japan strong. So I guess they turned it up on another level uh, once they got back to Japan. Um, the Bullet Club team takes the loss here, so zero wins, one loss, zero points for G.O.D. As the returning champions, Finn Juice, David Finley, and Juice Robinson get the win with two points here in the ninth, the ninth match of the night using the Doomsday device. Tenth match of the night, best match of the night. These guys will never put on a bad match, in my opinion. Uh, yet again, another one of those situations where I didn't understand, where I don't ever necessarily understand the booking. I get that this is tournament play or tournament action, um, but geez, Louise, man, if you put if you're putting the strap on, and and, and I guess this, this is this was my same argument with Naito being in the G1. Um, if you got the champ in the tournament and you have him eating losses. It's like, what's the point of him being the champion? That's my mindset. I understand how things get booked out in this point system and yada, yada, yada. Don't get me wrong. I'm just like, first match of the night, you have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, Taiji Shimori of the Bullet Club, going up against former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, multi-time, both guys, multi-time, Hiromu Takahashi of Los Ingobe Navas de Japón. 20 minutes, 6 seconds. Um, some of the spots, just plain fucking ridiculous. The pile driver from Ishimori to Takahashi on the apron was cringe-worthy. Cringe-worthy. I cannot express to you how that makes uh, fans who care about the wrestlers feel. That is not cool to see, um, regardless of how guarded, protected you want, you, you, you're you taking, no, 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 no. Um, I just think it's ridiculous to do something like that. Um, I believe the same thing with when, when Takahashi does the sunset flip uh, from the inside of the ring to the outside of the ring to try to get the power bomb to his opponent on the outside of the ring. I think that's super dangerous as well. Um, they gotta really cut that out because that's 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 neck whiplash waiting to happen. Somebody could break a neck during that, get a break, get, get a neck injury, or even worse, if they land flat back like they're supposed to, you could really hurt your back doing that shit. Um, but it was a great match nonetheless um, because these guys don't give you anything less but great matches. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi wins this match with the time bomb over the champion. Uh, this would have been great as the final. But it was the first match 
uh, it was the last match main event of the first night of the Best of Super Juniors tournament. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure where this is going. I'm not sure where the where the Best of Super Juniors tournament is going. I'm not sure where the World Tag League uh, tournament is going. Um, but you got one win, two points for Takahashi, zero wins, one loss, zero points for Taiji Shimori, who is currently the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Um, so, that is it for this weekend roundup for me. I will be back during the week to cover uh, World Tag League action for tomorrow, uh, which is the 16th. And I will pair that with the Best of Super Junior show, uh, which is going to be uh, taking place on the 18th. So probably on the night of the 18th, which is Wednesday, uh, I probably, probably sometime after I watch Dynamite, uh, I'll watch <laughs> um, the Super Junior end of the tournament, which is on the 18th, because the World Tag League part is tomorrow, 16th. Um, I believe, right? If I'm not mistaken, I can be totally thrown off, but let me double check. Let me double check. Best of Super Junior Night 2 preview. That's that's for the 16th. Okay. So it's the Best of Super Junior Night tomorrow, and then World Tag League on the 18th. Um, so we've got uh, Best of Super Junior Night 2 preview, uh, where the first match of the night is going to be, they're bringing back the tag matches, guys. They're bringing back the tag matches. <sighs> Anyways, um, so we've got uh, uh, Satoshi Kojima and Hanma going up against Yuji Nagata and Gabriel Kidd. And then we walk into uh, Super Junior action. We have Yu Yu Amura vs. Bushi. Uh, we have Master Watto vs. Robbie Eagles. Uh, we have Sho vs. Doki. Uh, we have uh, Taguchi versus Ishimori. And then the main event will be the Ticking Time Bomb, Hiromu Takahashi versus El Desperado. Uh, that is going to be Mr. Super Junior's Night 2, which will take place at Kirikin Hall um, tomorrow night, December, December, November 16th, 2020. And then the World Tag League show is going to take place on November 18th. Um, and I'll pair those together uh, to pair all those shows, the night twos, the night threes, the night fours, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to go on and not uh, overload you guys with too much content. So as always, folks, as I like to tell y'all, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the True Heel Heat YouTube channel. Uh, be good to one another. Take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Remain wrestling fans, folks. This has been your good brother, J News. I'll be back sometime this week. I'll see y'all there. Till then, I'm about this. Peace.